I will do it for Oh man, you guys will love it. You guys will love it. Hello everyone, it's Love here and today I'm proud to present you this deck that went undefeated so far in Mythic and oh boy it has insane strength. You will also see absolutely best Iliana ult of your life. So if you if you want to learn how to split the piles, this like it will be it will be fun, I promise man. I'm excited even thinking about it. And the rest of the deck is standard Shigeki shell with a lot of value. I mean guys you want to see the deck in action. If you are interested about you know all the small synergies in the deck go to outro and right now enjoy the show. Oh and subscribe if you didn't. That really supports the channel. Have you heard this one before? Alright guys, have fun. Alright guys, so we are on the draw. Alright, this this might get very very harsh. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. Uh, aggro deck, right? Oh, is it? Or possibly Jeskai maybe. Alright, we should we should have a nice game here. We have quite a lot of cool cards for you know any kind of slower matchup. And yep, Jeskai control, as expected. You know what? I think we'll be pretty okay with, with this. We'll see. Uh, let's see if he traps for a 3 drop for some reason. No. Alright. I play this. This is not something he generally wants to counter, but it's also good for us. Of course, we go for chapter 1. We have a lot of black cards. So let's get the black mana, or so Besiege the Mirror is trigger black, right? We have black here, so generally maybe forest would be okay, but we have forest here, so I usually want to go a little bit skewed into the black mana. I want to rob them. <laughs> but, uh, this is such a slow thing to say, but that's true. Uh, if they tap... Or if they don't tap, oh, th this hurts them. This means they cannot double counter spell. So either they counter the robbery, which I think they will do, but then our planeswalker goes through, and then we get Shigeki to get back the robbery. So they're not in an oh, oh my god, you are a legend deck. What the hell? <laughs> All right, I guess we swing. No way, he's answering it. Absolutely. But I love it. I got everything. Alright. So, uh, one mana. What was this doing? Uh, you may each non and permanent control is all colors. Like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, I really think this is a sorry in turn. That's pretty huge. That means we already draw cards. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. My way. And I cannot really play anything. Uh, do we go with Shigeki? No. The answer is no. Absolutely not. Alright. Wow. <laughs> what is this? Well, oh, the mana stone that can deal damage, right? Three poison damage? Really? Alright. I'm listening. Let's keep drawing, because we might be able to, to deal 13 damage. That should help a little bit. Alright, and our opponent is getting into a lot of trouble, so now he's tapped and we do all the things that he doesn't want to see. Starting with Lidiana. I guess he has here the second mana, so he can still counter something, but it shouldn't matter. That big cover up is not the worst. Uh, I will play the tortoise on this turn. I honestly think we can get rid of this one. I want the open mana for Shigeki channel. Alright, here we go. And let's see if it goes through. It might die to Helix, which is absolutely fine, because I already got the value. Alright, oh, I can get this one, uh, which was absolutely intentional. Oh man, so intentional. I like Surveil, man. <laughs> I like Surveil, what can I say? And land. We don't need a land. It, it also it looks better in the graveyard. Alright, so our opponent has a lot of problems to solve. To be fair, Burn Down the House solves literally everything except Sorin. But he needs to have it, he needs to play it, and I still get Sorin, so I still get card advantage, so it's not the worst. He needs to answer the Tortoise, otherwise we are getting uh, every turn extra lands, which is something he definitely doesn't want. 
Uh, let's start with Lily, because we drew this. And this is not a good card for the matchup. And I wish he played better cards, because I stole them and I don't even want them. Even he doesn't want them. <laughs> uh, let's go with sorry. This means uh, we are guaranteed to draw a card, right? It had to be a 7 drop, right? They have lightning helix. I actually need to be... Like, Soren, can you stop hitting my Path of Paris from the top? Please? Please? What's in the graveyard? Shigeki. Yeah, I think we just chill. I want mana, that's for sure. I mean, I don't need Path of Pearl here, so I will gladly need it. Alright, if he kills it... Sure, Emperor. But I don't have poison. <laughs> so I still will get some value here. I've learned much during my travels. And that also means... Oh, robber. It's fine. It's fine. Let's go for the cottage. And... If they want to kill the tortoise, that means they cannot have uh, the token. So it, it seems like a good deal to them, uh, but it's not. One, two, three cards. You're done. Three cards. That's not the worst. If I play the relic, I get less, right? I get one, two. So one, two. So one card less. I don't think we have time to set up for two turns. I think we need the Shigeki now. Uh, because we are running short on value here. And this will be the turn when he has no pressure. This can create a token and that's it. Uh, he wants to go for Sorin. So this is the turn when we kind of have no pressure from him. And that's, that's when we can channel. He can go with the Spire, absolutely. And it prevents the... I mean, I could just activate the Cottage Man. That Remember means he has drink. lightning helix? <laughs> yeah, like what do you even do, man? Like I can just go, I, I, I will highlight it. Because I want him to know. He can get the scry though. Right, I can just block it. So it feels like he has helix right now. Let's give him the scry. Uh, what I actually want is robber and robber. Probably. I mean, I honestly don't care about ultimating him, to be honest. Like, I prefer my Ch Shigeki channel more than anything. Alright, let's go for it. One, two, three cards. You know, not the best Shigeki ever, but a solid one. One, two. And land for the next turn. I should go with the Glade, but I want to play a bit faster, you know? Of course, it cannot be countered. Alright, here we go. So, let's start with the cards. Our opponent doesn't want to discard anything. And we go with the tap land, because Robber will be stronger with... Uh, you know, it's basically one free card if we keep this one. And our opponent, you can see the Liliana pressure mounting. And he plus the Emperor, so now he will make it... A Man, Emperor is so slow after this initial minus two. And we could just try to kill the Emperor. But I think we can just win on the value side. Okay, sure. Uh, can I draw non-Path of Pearl, please? Thank you, sorry. You are the best. I mean, this kind of solves one of the problems, so let's go for it. I can still go for the Baby Robber, I guess. Uh, I think he has Helix, which means he can deal 3 damage, but not 4. That means he cannot save the Emperor. And... I mean, I honestly don't care. <laughs> I want to keep them so I can use Deadly Cover Up on them, if if I care. Alright. I got the value. So, Robber is for, what, 3, 4? Listen. This is a setup turn. We are going for it. And we'll show him what the true outrageous robber looks like. And we can still use the food token, which is cute. I guess we can leave it for Besiege the Mirror. But honestly, I have everything I need <laughs> right now. Maybe I would go with the extra turtle. Sure. 
here's your big bet the furry. No the big bet the furry. Ready to win. Spirit? Really? That seems to be like the worst. Alright, I think we should be absolutely fine here. Yeah, we keep it. I, I don't think we... Oh, oh man. That's, that's just too perfect. You know what? I will do it for... Oh man, you guys will love it. You guys will love it. Now we will show you how to split with Liliana in a very, very menacing way. Here you go. You can have the fairy and the land, or the rest. I should name the spire, so it shouldn't be the land archive. See? That's how you split. See? This is how you ultimate with Liliana. Alright, we are going first. Well, that's a weird hand, but I'm taking it. I'm taking it. And I kinda know what I want with Surveil. This. This is what I want with Surveil. And we are against the Analyst deck. Alright. Okay, okay. This will be a bit wild. So we are kinda doing the same thing, but he has like absolutely amplified version of it. Uh, at the cost of everything else. Let's still go with it. We definitely want to ramp as much as we can. Uh, I'm, hmm, I'm a little bit concerned how it goes. I can start attacking with the cottage, maybe. I need to get rid of those lands. Honestly, I could just deadly cover up this. I honestly think... Oh, I don't have the evidence. Alright. Let's go. Let's freaking go. Go, Cottage. You have a lot of work to do. We take this one. Uh, we want to keep all of them of the same type in case, miraculously, we get to six uh, evidence. No evidence yet. The, the problem with this kind of deck is that they generally want six mana to have Analyst instantly, you know, activatable. I don't know if that's a word, but today it is a word. Uh, if they go any, anything else, uh, they risk losing it. Well, two lands is pretty good, man. Two lands is pretty good. Alright. I kinda like this kind of decks, man. It's so much more fun than seeing aggro decks. Uh, but we are absolutely flooding here. Yeah, we started bad and it went worse. <laughs> That's basically what happened. By the way, for some reason he will he's above 20, uh, so let's keep exiling the lands, because I played the deck, I know how much it hurts. When they don't have those lands, their deck stops working, kinda. And they don't want to play Analyst to hit one land. They will mill three cards, so, you know, here's the turn. So they might hit more, they really want to, and they hit two lands, so that's that's insane. Well, this lets them really recover very easily. And we still didn't really have good cards for the matchup. Like, I'm exiling a, a land every single turn, and they're at two lands still. And they got all this value. Oh, they didn't play a land, of course! Why did I think they did draw a land? So this is Virtue, Green Virtue. Their draw is really good. Their draw is honestly really good. I don't think we can beat it, like, we are trying, like, look at this, I'm attacking him with the cottage since three turns, that's all I have right now, <laughs> so that's extremely bad, and even though I'm trying to get rid of all the lands, look at this, this is what we, we have done, and he still has, uh, you know, so many lands, because uh, he hit them, like, hitting two lands with the with this meal is insanely huge, if they d if they hit one, uh, sure, I think we kind of have to play Edict, man, like, they won't have too many creatures, uh, like, yeah, at that step of this turn I'm playing Edict, basically, uh, because that means it will be easier to go for deadly cover-up, maybe, worst case, I can even go Sky Turtle and waste the loop, alright, I mean, it's fine. This one doesn't even matter. See, but if he moved like this, it would be so much easier. Yep. 
Yep. Here comes the couple gang. I mean, I'm not sure if we should go for the Pergang or Memorodrus. Like, I really prefer Memorodrus generally. Because it cuts, you know, their drawing engine. That's the, the one drawing engine they have, basically. And our opponent is like, what the hell are you doing, man? And I'm like, what the hell I'm doing, man? Uh, is there anything I want from the graveyard? Not really. Man, I mean, we really get, need to get rid of the loop, I guess. That's so bad, man. This is just so bad. I can just try to attack him, I guess. I think this is honestly better, but then I don't have enough mana. It's just all around bad, man. Did I play land for the turn? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Man, this is so expensive. Do I really attack him for four turns with a cottage and nothing else? Alright, let's try to play it out, but I don't see us ever winning this. I don't even have cards to take back from the graveyard. Alright, alright. Listen, I will go with the Memordelush because we know that he has at least two incomes, right? He has the Rage and there's this Doppelgang as well. So if we get rid of Doppelgang, we die to the to the other big thing. Like, it doesn't really matter what he has in the hand. Uh, we fully whiffed, we have no cards relevant for the matchup for a very long time. So he plays this, he can get all the lands, so... What's in the... I think we can still play it. We can try to play it out. Uh, until he draws a Wencon. Like, he has infinite mana, but nothing to do with it. So we just, you know, hope for the best. I guess we can get rid of the, you know, the Guru thing. What is it called? Word Source Rage. Burn down the house. That's actually really perfect for me. That's actually perfect. Sure. So he will get all the lands. We, we already know that whatever he draws, he can always play it. He will have insane amounts of mana. However, he doesn't get any extra draws with all this mana. Okay, this, this is acceptable, I guess. I should probably play Sorin first, but it's fine. Not really, I wouldn't be able to. Alright, let's get rid of all of them. Take 3 damage to the face, clear the board, and get rid of the Swincon. He still has the Archavios, so you know, it's not over, but it limits their good draws. And maybe, in some crazy way, gives us enough time. If we can uh, plus one Sorin three times, we can finish the job with the Cottage easily. We have also those food tokens, which may might be used on the next turn. We need to go into Ultimate. Yep, sure, whatever. Whatever we get, we play. Alright, so it's just a question of how quickly he can draw a wincon. Because we can kill him in like three turns. So if he if he draws three lands and this is absolutely possible, he dies. Necropsy. Necropsy can get rid of one of the virtues. He still probably wants to play them. Alright, alright. Here's the Archavios. And a lot of lands, right? Three. Three lands, well, not the worst. Sure. And now they keep it for blocking, which is funny, kinda. Uh, they want to keep attacking Soaring to give themselves a little bit more time. Sure. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess. Uh, how much evidence do we have? Not much, not much. That's a fair weird play, but the correct one. 
Alright, this will be weird, man. Yep. I want to just keep hitting their face so I can get them to 13. And we need to protect Sorin. So don't forget, they have infinite mana, but nothing to do with it, because we exile the one way to get the mana usage. And the Rage is also nice, because it's another card that, you know, Gets the job done. Alright, let's go. Like, we can win into turns, man. So what do we want to exile? Invasion of Archivios. They can take stuff from the graveyard. But I think what we really take is the lands that, you know, heal him. He has them in the hand, but if he draws Analyst or something, it, it reduces the life gain. And the game will boil down to what he draws from the top. Alright. No Path of Pearl, alright. Well, that's actually pretty insane. My oh, three. Not for the weak. This is interesting, isn't it? So, I can go... Three, six, eight cards. I mean, I'm winning on the next turn, probably. Oh, I'm not sure if... Okay, okay, sure. Oh, they're, they're tapped. Right, right, right. So no summoning sickness. Do we attack with two of them? That's a little bit scary, man. If I attack with two, uh, he can just go... One, two, I can go up to ten. He has enough mana to kill me anyway. Oh, right, I exiled this Wincon. Sorry, my bad. I think we should go with this, but maybe... Oh, man, it's scary. Let's go for it. I don't see a reason to not attack. And I might be super wrong. Alright, and the Broker's Hideout. I mean, man, we did a very nice job at exiling stuff this game. Alright, you have this draw to win the game. Show me. So this was one of the cards. He has still two. I think one isn't what he needs. Oh my god. Did we really win? Did we really win this? Oh my god, we did it! We did it! Man, we had such insanely bad draw at the start, and we still managed to win this. Sorry, chill, alright? I'm making the game outro right now. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed. Alright guys, so if we were on the play, that would be insanely perfect, because we are guaranteed to hit both uh, Edict and Liliana. However, on the draw it was a gamble, but our opponent is not playing... Uh, this is not the card. Uh, our opponent is not playing uh, an aggro deck. So it means that we should be able to get there. I think we need to start with Liliana. Oh man, I, I just realized how far from Liliana we are. I will go with Shigeki. They generally have their game plan uh, with like ramping that they don't really want to waste. So I think we will lose Shigeki and that, that won't be great. But I think it's a worthy gamble. It's fine. It's fine. That also means Liliana goes through. Robber is a nice draw. We need to start attacking their hand. Edict is very nice, man. So far they didn't show any cards that we care about. But I will go with the Edict still. It's a really good card. But I think it's, you know, the worst from what we have right now. Just double bind them. Easy. <laughs> Man, the amount of bindings they keep drawing against me uh, on a regular basis is insane. Do you have... Man, the point is that every single one of those cards need to be removed instantly because they are game deciding. Uh, I actually don't want more. I want more lands in the graveyard. So please, don't remove the tortoise at least. And here we go. You are out, huh? 
you are out finally. All right, let's go with the cottage. I think cottage is nice. Good, good. All right, I think this will be a robber turn. Her migration is acceptable. Uh, they might play land and uh, you know use the cottage. Zendikar. Sure. Absolutely fine, my friend. Yeah, I think four cards is good enough for the robbery. It should give us some leniency, and we can even hit binding to hit binding. So the binding would, won't hit our binding, so we hit their binding, you know? Alright, let's go four. Go. One, two, three, four. Aklazot. Not the perfect card to be on this side. I mean, when this dies, it transforms for them, but it also discards cards, which is pretty okay. I could go Sorin and Stomper, which honestly I think is a little bit better. Let's go. See? They only have four bindings, and we have basically everything we want. Reveal. So this should be the land we play this turn. Let's go Stumpy Stumpy. Like, we create pressure on so many fronts right now. And you can see that when they cannot answer this tortoise, like, man, it stacks so quickly. Like, look at all the extra mana we are getting. And let's go for the Survey Land. We want Boseiju in the graveyard, because we can take it back with Shigeki. I honestly don't think this is the card. Like, we need to first see the Wincon to exile it, and right now, when we see Wincon, it it will be, you know, kinda late. Look at all this mana, we outramped the ramp deck. Oh, just a cute stomper. But at least it can attack, like our stomper can. That's the freaking third binding in top 20 cards, bro. <laughs> can you chill? Like, this is insane, man. This is honestly insane. Are you serious, man? So yeah, I could activate both of the cottages. That will be 12 damage. But then I don't really have the mana for the next stuff. We can use... So we will use Parasitic Grasp. That's 3 mana. We will trade here. Then we have the Stomper. So 3 mana we have what? 5... 7 mana for something. We cannot cycle this one. Not the best, I think we go with Akrazot, because they sh they still might have Sunfalls. Oh man, that's annoying. Yeah, alright, I think we know. I think I know. Not smart. They really don't like the tortoise. Here's Shigeki. Let's get this blunt. They get a good block. I really think they should do. They have one cottage, we need to remember about it. I should probably go after the damage, but it's fine. It's not like they have the fourth binding, right? And we prepare Onslaught for the next turn. And Akrazot for this turn. We are a little bit short on value, but he's on 13. If he keeps Sun falling... Sunfall won't make a 4-4, so it means we can attack with Cottages until he dies, and we have a lot of lands because we stole them from both decks. Alright, I see. Man, this guy just draws all the answers. Yep. Told you. I guess Triple Binding is not good enough. They need more. <laughs> they need more. So, if we play... A if we play this, uh, they can go with, uh, you know, with their thing. I mean, this is my game plan right now. They still have something, are you serious? Alright, we will just try to beat them up. <laughs> that's, my, that's my game plan. So, let's exile the most expensive stuff so they don't have the evidence. They still have six perfectly, but it's fine. I just need to beat them up, man. So I don't want to play this card or this card because then they will be able to transform it. It's tapped, but still. 
And this one, all, uh, I cannot cycle it because it's not in my hand. And you need to discard it as a part of the cost, and it's not in your head, it, hand, it's just uh, exalt. I mean, this guy has it all, man. Every strategy you make, he just throws the, the thing. I think we might still overpower him, but oh boy. Man, after all of this, he still scooped. I think we are doing something right, man. Triple binding, <laughs> sweepers, hurt migration. It's weird that he's, you know, he gave up. Oh, he, he sees the deadly cover. Okay, that explains it. All right, guys, so let's talk about the deck itself, because I, I think the games were really fun. And we played all of the games that you have seen today, so it was just three games, but we won all of them in a row, so you, you were seeing the exact experience I had with this deck in Mythic. I was playing uh, yesterday with, you know, Unracked, testing the deck, and man, it was originally a cave deck, but I got absolutely destroyed and I re reshaped the whole deck without the caves. Like, I wanted to make a spelunking deck when this, you know, confluction thing but it's just too clunky and the mana base was was pretty disastrous so this version seems to be performing way way better so uh the cool combo we didn't really set use but that was one of the ideas for the deck why the weather seat treaty normally you don't see this card and why would you care about a 1-1 one, one creature, right? It's basically the whole payout for playing this kind of deck. Uh, we, uh, sorry, this kind of card. We still have a lot of basics, so it's not like we are, like, you know, dedicating our lands to this. However, we could get, for example, a clue with the different card. Uh, you know, there's the three mana sorcery that gives you a land and also gives you a clue. So we are wasting full cards on this token, basically. Why? Because Besiege the Mirror, uh, you can either use the token or you can use this, and this was the idea, right? You play this on one turn, you get your basic, your opponent does something, then it's chapter two, you make a creature, and then the chapter three is just the main buff, which absolutely doesn't matter. So you basically get three Besiege the Mirror, and this is three drop, and this is four drop, so you can play those on the curve. That was the synergy I was talking about in the intro mostly, and this is something I was really excited for. Uh, actually, the whole deck is built around it. You didn't even see it, because I think in all of the three games i think i never drew this card which is kind of insane when you think about it man we played three long games and not a single besiege the mirror we played the same amount of soaring as uh, soaring so yeah uh, that was the idea we also have you know uh, this small token that you can also use and that's the second thing uh, reason i'm going for this card you have this token right and it's turn three you ramp into five mana because you play you have you know, three mana, you ramp to four, then you will play fifth on the next turn. That means this token will block a uh, Knight of Aeos or something. And that can be game winning. And then you play Deadly Cover Up and sweep the board. That was the idea. So I think that uh, even though the card is not insanely powerful in itself, in this kind of shell, it kind of makes a lot of sense, especially that we kind of skip on the early game cutdowns, all the stuff, because then there are the draws later. So we are focused with Parasitic Grasp, uh, having Shigeki as a blocker, just ramping with Celestus or you know removing stuff with Rivian. I'm all over the place, but I think you will get the idea because I was thinking a lot about this deck and those were reasons for the cards as you see them. Uh, we have one Path of Perry, exactly because Besiege the Mirror. This is one of the reasons you have quite a lot of one-offs. One the end, one Path of Perry, one uh, Necropsy. And yeah, you can just get the card you need. Uh, always, I think Sorin is probably the best play. Uh, when you go the treaty into Besiege the Mirror into Sorin, because that guarantees you, guarantees you the value and instantly drawing a card. So I'm talking a lot about this deck, but I was pretty excited about it. Uh, believe it or not, the robber was exactly the last card added to this deck. <laughs> I originally played without the robber, uh, but it just fits so well with Shigeki decks. Why? Because it's not legendary. It's a win con that isn't legendary, and most of your other win cons are kind of legendary, like Sorin. Liliana, even Shigeki itself. So yeah, we have just one loop in this deck, so be sure to, you know, cherish it, <laughs> don't waste it. Uh, we could also go like Geek's Command or, you know, the the one mana Golgari thing. Let's, let's go for it. 
you know, if we are interactive today in the in the uh, outro, we will show you. Urborg Repossession. This is a card that really works nicely with Shigeki, however, it doesn't work with anything else. So that's why I'm usually not using it. Uh, Dig Up is very hard to use in the current meta because, uh, you know, everything is so super quick. I kind of thought about one. I think one could make it work, but with uh, Besiege the Mirror, this is just faster alternative, so I think it's it's good enough. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this a, a bit more in-depth uh, guide. Uh, a lot of thought usually goes into those decks, and some things can be not apparent unless you play the deck or unless you get the situation. Like when you go to turn four and suddenly you have this to sacrifice to Besiege the Mirror, it's like, oh, well, that, that works. And yeah, before then, you won't really notice it most of the time. So yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, tell me in the comments if you survived until the end and if you enjoyed this kind of outro. All right, man, that was way too long, way too long. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching and you're absolutely amazing. See you tomorrow.